At this point, you know how to write complex queries. You know how to simplify these queries by saving them in views. And you also know how to insert, update, and delete data using SQL statements. Now, let's say you're building an application that has a database. Where are you going to write these SQL statements? You're not going to write them in your application code for a couple of reasons. One reason is that it will make your application code messy and hard to maintain. For example, if you're building an application with C Sharp or Java or Python, you don't want to mix your Java code with SQL because the SQL code gets in the way and it makes your application code look messy and hard to maintain. Also, some programming languages like C Sharp or Java require a compilation step. So if you write your SQL queries in your application code and then find out that you need to change one of your queries, you'll have to recompile your application code for these changes to take effect. So every time you make a change in your SQL code, you will have to recompile and potentially redeploy your application code. For these reasons, you should take your SQL code out of your application code and store it in a database where it belongs. But where? Inside a stored procedure or function. So a stored procedure is a database object that contains a block of SQL code. In our application code, we simply call these procedures to get or save the data. So we use stored procedures to store and organize our SQL code. But stored procedures have other benefits. Most database management systems perform some kind of optimization to the code in stored procedures. So the SQL code in stored procedures can sometimes be executed faster. Also, just like views, stored procedures allow us to enforce data security. For example, we can remove direct access to all the tables and allow various operations like inserting, updating, and deleting data to be performed via stored procedures. Then we can decide who can execute which stored procedures, and this will limit what the user can do with our data. For example, we can prevent certain users from deleting our data. So stored procedures are very powerful, and in this section, you're going to learn how to create and use them. So let's get started.